Welcome to Allen Berry Reports TV. I'm your host, Allen Berry Labucan from AllenBerryReports.com. Uh, today we have a new installment of our In the News show. Uh, this is the show where we talk about resource companies with high quality projects and talk about their recent developments. Um, on today's show, we have three companies to talk about. Uh, one of those companies is a gold mining company in Manitoba that's also very aggressive with their uh, exploration. Uh, another company is, uh, is a platinum, palladium and gold pro uh, company uh, with an uh, advanced project in Brazil. And the third company is uh, focused on copper in Peru. Um, we'll open the show with some uh, comments about um, reasons we think that uh, resource stocks are primed to outperform bullish moves in commodities. Um, before getting started, we always like to start out with some thank you messages. Um, first of all, we use YouTube.com as our primary website to uh, produce and broadcast these shows. They're, they have a great website for anybody interested in doing online shows, and we highly recommend them. Uh, if you're watching the show on our website at AllenBerryReports.com and you look to the left and right of me, you'll notice that we have uh, banner sponsors. Uh, those banner sponsors are really important in us being able to um, uh, bring these shows to you. And uh, if you'd like to do some homework on those companies, uh, the banners are directly linked to the company's websites. And on the company's websites, they have plenty of information about the people involved, the projects, the um, uh, news, and it's a great place to do your homework on those companies. And uh, again, the banners on our websites are directly linked to those company websites. And of course, to you, the viewers, uh, you give us an audience to talk to about uh, commodities, resource stocks, the stock market, and other subjects, and we really appreciate you uh, tuning in, so thank you very much as well. Um, Okay, so now we're going to get on to some of the um, uh, topics we wanted to talk about in today's commentary. Uh, the main focus is uh, on, the, on the topic that we think that uh, resource stocks uh, are primed to outperform uh, bullish moves in commodities. And some of the reasons that we think that is, on past shows we've talked about the difficulties we're having um, finding new uh, com uh, companies with new discoveries or developments um, that we want to talk about on the show. And, um, th and that, uh, that has been the case uh, for nearly a year now, and, and it's uh, definitely continuing. Um, this is very bullish for long-term prices of several commodities, as it keeps the, um, for a long time, the, uh, there's been weakness in the supply chains of uh, several commodities. That is one of the primary reasons that commodity prices have moved up so aggressively. Um, we hear a lot of talk about the various reasons people buy, uh, buy commodities, but at the end of the day, if the supply was strong and the demand is strong, the price is really not gonna go too far. Uh, why commodities have been on a, a decade-long bull market is because the demand is strong, but the supply is soft. And uh, the, this trend of having difficulties finding new discoveries is a good indication of what's gonna happen as we go out years into the future. And uh, we think that it's gonna fuel much higher prices for uh, commodities. Um, and uh, this is also very bullish for high quality resource companies with new discoveries and development projects as the value of what they have in the ground is increasing in, 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 in what it's worth. Um, you know, if you, uh, these companies have high, the, the key com many of the companies that we follow in our reports and on the shows have really high quality projects, yet it doesn't look like the uh, the valuation of the companies is realistically um, reflecting the price of what the price of the bullish moves in the price of the commodities that these companies have in the ground. So that's another reason that we think that uh, what's currently happening with the dif difficulty of finding new companies is very bullish for uh, the key resource companies that we follow. And so. 
um you know that's that's uh that's good for our show as well if we were having if the companies we follow didn't have a lot of good news on a consistent basis then we wouldn't have a lot to talk to talk about on the shows but even though we're not finding a lot of new companies to talk about the companies that we do follow are very aggressive they got great projects and they're working really hard on those projects so they got a lot of news to talk about and that gives us a lot to talk about here on our shows excuse me um there is also um what's happening is there's a a growing crowd of investors that are chasing a small group of resource companies with outstanding projects um and there's also pressure on majors that are active in the mergers and acquisitions um both the uh for and were both the investors and the res um and the major mining companies that are having uh to chase after a smaller group of uh companies to um target uh for in the case of investors investments in the case of resource com or uh major mining companies the ability they're not very good at uh finding new discoveries usually they fi improve their um uh, their portfolio or their pipeline uh by using the checkbook not the drill rig and they're having a hard they're chasing after a smaller group and we're even seeing now that the consolidation is feeding down into the juniors where junior mining companies are taking over other juniors and so um, there's been a healthy uh, amount of consolidation that we think will continue it does it doesn't change the fact that more investors want to invest in resource companies and majors want to secure future production uh, that those things haven't changed and so that's very bullish um, and as i said both investors and mining companies are consistently chasing a smaller pool of out resource companies with outstanding projects and that is also uh, another key reason why uh, we think that uh, resource companies are going to outperform um, going forward uh, resource companies with discoveries or development projects need to be repriced we don't think that they are um, accurately uh, reflecting the uh, value of what they have in the ground um, it seems to me like uh, many of these resource companies with solid deposits or development projects are still being priced as if the commodities were much cheaper than they are and so uh, this is this is actually quite bullish for uh, for the the uh, those that call, talk about a, a commodity um, a bubble. Uh, if there was a bubble, you would also see uh, practically any mining any resource related company uh, prices going through the roof, and we're not seeing that. In fact, it's quite subdued. So that's also a, a bullish sign for uh, commodity prices. Um, uh so we have think that the high quality resource companies have plenty of catching up to do uh going forward it looks like uh, resource stocks are prime primed to play catch up uh to the bullish moves in commodities and we expect that during the remainder of this year 2011 that resource stocks will outperform the bullish moves that we see coming for commodities so we think the best place to look for above average performance in the uh, commodity and resource space is in uh, resource stocks so that's a wrap on our opening commentary we're now going to talk about um, uh, our companies that uh, we pull some news that they've had out recently and talk about that news and so the first company we're going to talk about today is sand gold corporation on the disclosure we're not shareholders of the company they are a banner sponsor on our website and so if you want to do some homework on the company just click on their banner it's directly linked to their website where you can find plenty of information um, our past coverage includes they are a featured company in the Allen Berry reports email newsletter uh, we started coverage of them in that report on October the 30th 2008 which was our 20th edition we've also had them on our uh, past shows uh, several of our past shows the first time we had them on was on our May 26 2010 show if you'd like to find that uh, those reports or uh, the shows just look above me on the website and you'll notice that we have a report section in there you'll find all of our past reports including that um, 
uh, 20th edition and you can either read it online or download it in a word file uh, and also if you're looking for the show we've got a show section in there we have all the past shows we include the dates uh, the topics that were discussed the companies that were discussed and a link to go watch the shows um, Sandgold's uh, website is sandgold.ca that's s-a-n-g-o-l-d dot c-a and uh, as I said earlier we've talked about this comp- company several times on our past shows uh, the most recent time was on our March 16th 2011 show and since then they've had two press releases out that we want to talk about on today's uh, show and so I'm just uh, pulling up their website uh, now again that's sandgold.com or sorry dot ca uh, in there they have a uh, news and rep- uh, news releases section and uh, then we're looking for the first one we're going to talk about today is the April 5th uh, press release. In that one, the headline is Sand Gold's first quarter mine production outpaces current mill compa- capacity. They go on that they uh, announced preliminary first quarter production and development results from the Rice Lake project in Manitoba, Canada. Uh, there is a quote from Mr. Peary, who is the uh, president and CEO of Sand Gold, who stated, and I quote, uh, our ore production from the company's two mines exceeded current mill capacity through the last half of the quarter, finishing the period with more than two weeks of ore stockpiled. This is an important milestone for achieving steady state production at the Rice Lake project, end quote. Then uh, later in the uh, press release, they have uh, details from the fourth quarter ended March the 31st, 2011 uh, they give you the details on the um, uh, milled and processed ore uh, they give you the uh, uh, the gray head grade of a close to a quarter ounce per uh, per ton uh, they produced about four almost 15,000 ounces of gold um, then they give you more details about the uh, milling operations the uh, the the increased uh, um, throughput on the uh, milling operations. Um, they give you more details about some major capital projects that they've had on the pro uh, on the property, and um, and then again plenty more details about the um, uh, about the production. And then uh, later in the uh, press release, there's another quote from Mr. Peary, who said, and I quote. Sand Gold Management is pleased with the first quarter 2011 mining results that are in line with 2011 gold production guidance of 80,000 ounces and we are looking forward to an exciting second quarter. We anticipate a healthy news flow on exploration front in keeping with the outstanding performance of our exploration and mine geologists." End quote. So that's the uh, some of the key information from the pre- uh, April 5th press release. The next one we wanted to talk about today is their April 7th press release. Uh, it's just loading up here right now. And uh, as always, when we're doing a li- when we're doing a, a one-shot tape show, <laughs> it never seems to come up quite as quickly as we'd like. Um, the, uh, the headline from that one is uh, 007 East Zone Expands Along Shoreline Basalt. And uh, still having difficulties pulling that up. I got another place you can also get on their front page. Uh, if you go to the front page of their website, it also comes up there. So now we got her up here. So again, uh, they went on in that uh, April 7th press release that they were pleased to report exploration step out drilling from surface and underground has extended the 007 zone to the east by as much as 100 meters bringing the total strike length of 007 zones to 500 meters to date. Uh, then they give you a, a, uh, some of the highlighted holes. For example, uh, one of the holes had a 15.5 grams per ton uh, gold over 13.7 meters at a depth of 260 meters below surface. Uh, they had uh, another hole with 17.8 grams per ton gold over 4.2 meters. Uh, and uh, then they then in the press release they also give you a, a table with all the various different drill results. This has uh, been pretty consistently since we've been following this project uh, or this company 
they've consistently been able to come out with uh, high grade over over uh, promising thicknesses and uh, that trend continues in this um, latest batch of results uh, later in the press release there's a quote from uh, Mr. Peary again who's the uh, president and CEO of uh, Sangold and he stated and I quote these results continue to demonstrate the size and strength of gold mineralization within the shoreline basalt the discovery and development of this new mine trend is an exciting new era for sand gold the success of our exploration efforts in these zones allows us to execute our plan to develop a new mine complex and continues to support the very aggressive drill program in place end quote and so again they've got some good details about the recent uh, exploration they also attach to that press release they also have some good um, uh, cross sections and of what's happening underground so it gives you a chance to sort of visualize uh, what what's happening with their drilling and so it's a really good uh, uh, pl uh, news release to help you understand what's going on with their recent drilling on their uh, 007 East zone and so um, uh, some of the that that's the key information from the press release um, that again you can find on their website some of the reasons that we like sand gold is um, they've been an emerging uh, uh, new gold producer for the last couple of years um, at the same time as they're uh, working on their uh, producing gold they've also had a lot of success with their exploration drilling this exploration drilling is actually now starting to bear some fruit in that uh, uh, they're now starting to produce from some of the high grade discoveries that they've made in the last couple of years and why they've been able to do that is these new discoveries are found in close proximity to the underground workings that are already in place for the Rice Lake mine and so it they've got really easy access they've had a really high success rate with finding new discoveries they're really aggressive with their drilling they got plenty of targets to keep on working on and at the same time they're now upping their uh, production uh, profile as well so they're really uh, got a lot of good things going for the company they're um, a very aggressive company they put out news on a regular basis this is uh, we expect that to continue in the future we've talked about them a lot because you know of these key points that we just discussed and uh, we expect to be talking about them a lot in future shows as well so um, again if you want to do some homework on the company as we always suggest people do great place to start that is on the company's web website at sandgold.ca so that's a wrap on our chat regarding uh, Sandgold. The next company we're going to talk about today uh, is Colossus Minerals Inc. Um, on the disclosure, we're not shareholders of the company. Um, our past coverage includes we uh, they're a featured company in the Allen Berry Report email newsletter. We started coverage of them on February the second, two thousand and nine, which was our twenty second edition. Uh, we've also had them on uh, past shows. The first excuse me the first show we had them on was on our June the 10th 2010 show uh, their website is colossusminerals.com that's c-o-l-o-s-s-u-s-m-i-n-e-r-a-l-s.com uh, this is a uh, as I said this is another company we talked about on several of our past shows uh, the most recent show was on our March the 22nd 2011 show and then a couple days later they had a really good press release out uh, that we want to talk about today that was on uh, March the 24th 2011 so I'm just pulling up their website now and um, uh, they have a they have a, uh, a an investor section with news releases they've also have that uh, their most recent press releases on the uh, front page of their website their home page and so we'll pull up that March 24th, uh, 2011 uh, press release. The headline from that is Colossus Minerals drills 7.8 meters at 136.43 grams per ton gold, 249.20 grams per ton platinum, and 121.40 grams per ton palladium in extensions of the central mineralized zone at Serra Palada, Brazil then they go on that they announced um, 
that they had encountered additional high-grade mineralization and additional results from a new 25,000 meter surface drill program at the Sarah Palata uh, Gold, Platinum, Palladium project um, in Paris State, Brazil. Some of the highlights, as they mentioned, uh, the first highlight hole is the one that they, uh, or one of the highlight holes was that one that's in the headline. Uh, another hole had a uh, 6.93 meter intersection of 59.66 grams per ton gold, 70.68 grams per ton platinum, 45.95 grams per ton palladium. Um, this is not isolated. We've been following this company since uh, 2009, and they've consistently been coming out with very high-grade uh, platinum, palladium, and gold uh, from their exciting Sierra Palata project, and this continues uh, with their latest results. They also went on that some of the highlights are the latter two subzones exhibit the highest grades of platinum so far encountered in Colossus's drilling at the Sierra Plata project and are open to the northeast and southwest. Um, they give you some more details about the recent drilling. There's a quote from Vic Wall, who's the Colossus VP of Exploration, and he commented, and I quote, after uh, focusing on con condemnation drilling and other activities to support development, we have launched a 25,000 meter surface drill program to develop the resource and realize the potential of the Sierra Plata Gold Platinum Group Element Project. Five drill rigs are now operational and additional high capacity rigs will be added in the coming months. We are particularly excited by the intersection of very high grade gold uh, PGE subzones and the CMZ uh, extensions and are following up on these and stepping out further on the CMZ. The pro uh, prospects of the conjunction of the GT and Western zones are looking good and we look forward to further extensions and discoveries of mineralized zones in the Sierra Palata Joint Ventures expanded land package." End quote. Then uh, later in the press release they give you some really good details about the drilling with a table of all the various different drill holes. They give you some good details about that CMZ zone or the central mineralized zone, the focus of the exploration. And uh, they also talk about the GT zone and the portal zone. And uh, then they've got a map that uh, shows you um, uh, a, uh, where the portal zone, the western zone, the GT zone, and the uh, um, SPD are located and um, you can find that uh, attached to that press release on the company's website and so that's the key information from the uh, that, that recent press release some of the reasons that we like Colossus is we're very bullish on platinum and palladium but finding high quality platinum and palladium projects outside of Russia and uh, South Africa is very difficult we av avoid projects in S Russia and South Africa, just too much political risk for us. Um, but on the other hand, finding a good quality project in Brazil is a whole different uh, can of worms to us. We're very, we're much more comfortable looking in uh, at projects in places like Brazil. And Colossus has, uh, we've been following them for a few years now, and uh, they've really delivered with their drilling and this uh, Sarah Palata project. Not only is it a good quality uh, platinum and palladium project, it's also really high grade. And, um, you know, high grade is a uh, can be a very lucrative uh, way to make money in the mining business. And uh, having a high grade project with platinum, palladium and gold in it uh, is really difficult to find. And so um, they're now they've now advanced it to the point that they're getting closer to uh, developing this into a potential mine. And so we like to see th those developments, but then they're staying very aggressive with their drilling. And so um, uh, they're a well-funded company. They got a lot of work they're doing. They'll generate a lot of news. We expect to be, we've talked about them several times in the past, and we expect to be talking them, about them again in, in our future shows. And uh, uh, if you want to do some homework on the company, as we always suggest is, uh, for you to do, uh, just check out their website at colossusminerals.com, and they've got plenty of information. I think you'll quickly realize uh, what is so exciting about this project to us. 
And so that's a wrap on our chat regarding Colossus. The third company and final company we're going to talk about today is uh, Candente Copper Corp. On the disclosure, we are shareholders of the company. Uh, our past coverage includes they are a featured company in our Allen Berry Reports email newsletter. We started coverage of them on May the 29th, 2006, which was our seventh edition. Uh, we've had them on one of our past shows on February the 2nd, 2011. Again, if you'd like to find those shows or those uh, reports, we have a report section on our website with all the past reports. We have a show section which, with all of our past shows, including the dates and the companies talked about and a link to go watch the shows. Um, their website is candentecopper.com. That is C-A-N-D-E-N-T-E. C O P P E R dot com. As I said, this is the, the or sorry, this will be the second time we've had them on uh, Candente on the show. And since we last talked about them on February second, they had a couple press releases out that we want to talk about today. And um, one was on February the seventeenth. Sorry, we got three. Uh, one on February seventeenth, one on March the twenty second, and one on April the sixth. All of those in two thousand eleven. So I'm just going to, uh, I've got their website up now, and uh, to make things easier, they have all these press releases we wanted to talk about on their front page. First one I'm going to pull up is their March 17th press release. In that one, the headline is, Candente Copper announces closing of a $26.9 million bot deal financing and $3.2 million non-broker private placement. They give you the details about the prices that this these uh, these were done at, this uh, fi financing, and uh, basically fills up their treasury so they can do a lot of work on their uh, on the Canary Aco project. Uh, you can find that press release on the company's website. The next press release we're looking for is their March the 22nd uh, press release. In the March the 22nd press release. Um, the hand headline is Candente Copper Plans Exploration Drilling for 2011. Uh, the subheadline is Drill, drill Programs Planned for Canariaco Sur, Co Cobrada Verde, Eracape, Eric and other Peru properties. They went on in that press release that uh, they announced several porphyry copper gold targets have been delineated on several of its properties in peru and the company is well financed for exploration drilling in 2011. Um, they talked about some of the work that they'll be doing is a definitive feasibility study on the canariaco norte project uh, exploration drilling on canariaco sur and cuabrata verde targets on the on the canariaco project uh, they expect they uh, estimated that that's going to be about five million dollars worth of drilling, uh, exploration drilling, uh, or sorry, exploration drilling on several other targets on the properties 100% owned uh, on properties 100% owned by Candente, uh, including Aracape. Um There's a quote from Joanne Fries, who's the uh, president uh, of, um, or sorry, CEO of Candente Copper, and she stated, and I quote. Now that the pre-feasibility study progress report has clearly demonstrated the robust economics of the Can Canariaco Norte deposit, we are very excited to resume exploration and, and drilling on the Canariaco pro property, as well as several other priority targets we have defined to date on a number of our 100% owned properties throughout Peru. Uh, she goes on, having Michael Thick. Join uh, Candente Copper as VP Exploration after reviewing our portfolio of properties in per Peru has confirmed our view that we hold a number of excellent exploration targets both adjacent to Canariaco Norte and elsewhere in Peru. Uh, the, she goes on that the coming year should be an exciting one for Candente Copper with the potential to discover additional resources at Canariaco Sur and Cobrada Verde which could significantly add to the scope of the Can Canariaco Norte project. This coupled with the Drill Ready Eric Pay project, the stable, uh, the stable of quality exploration products properties owned by Candente Copper and the project generating capacity of the Peruvian exploration team posi positions us well for additional porphyry, porphyry deposit discoveries, end quote. 
Uh, then they give you some more details about the exploration projects that they're going to be focused on. Uh, again, you can find that in the um, March the 22nd uh, press release on the company's website. And then on uh, April the 6th, 2011, uh, they had another press release out and uh, just going to get it up here. The headline is Candente Copper commences feasibility study on the Canariaco pro project. Uh, just having some difficulties here getting this up and running. So we're going to go to another section. Uh, if you go to their um, uh, corporate section, they have a news release in English. Uh, we're looking for the 2011 press releases and uh, where are we here this is giving us a little bit of, the website's challenging us there it is it's up now uh, April 6th headline uh, Candente Copper commences feasibility on the Canaraco Norte Copper project uh, they go on that they announced it, they have commenced the feasibility study on its on their 100% owned Canariaco Norte copper project in northern Peru. The feasibility is study is under the direction of AMAC Americas Limited. Uh, Pre-feasibility study progress report was completed by AMAC on March the 11th, 2011, and is available on the company's website. They have an, uh, they have a link to that uh, report. And um, then they uh, there's a quote from Sean Waller, who's the president of Candente, and he stated, and I quote, the PFSPR clearly indicates that the Canariaco Norte is an extremely attractive copper project with robust economics and a sound development plan. It is our objective to continue to de-risk the project by taking the engineering to the next level, uh, which we anticipate will provide the basis to make the decision to proceed to construction. Moving ahead immediately to F FS uh, with the AMAC team is an important factor in maintaining the overall schedule for project development, end quote. And so that's all the key information from the, uh, or the, the information from their press releases that stood out to us. You can find all the details on their website. Some of the reasons that we like uh, uh, Candente is they've got a really strong management team. Um, they've got a great project in their Canariaco project. It's a multi-billion pound uh, copper project in Peru. Um, we're very bullish on copper. Uh, finding high quality copper projects is, uh, is fairly difficult. Um, I think we've only got in our report six companies, six or seven companies that we've uh, found in mining friendly jurisdictions with high quality co copper projects. And it's not because we wouldn't like to add more. Uh, the reason is, is that it's difficult to find um, those kind of companies in mining friendly jurisdictions with uh, multi-billion pound uh, deposits and in, uh, in the case of Candente that's what they've got in their resources and they're doing more work they've, they've got exploration potential to, um, uh, to add to what they've al already have uh, when you're looking in areas where you have these big deposits it's a great place to look for other ones uh, there's often more in the area they're planning on doing a lot of exploration work at the same time as they're doing their feasibility study on the Canariaco Norte project. And so uh, they have the potential to make new discoveries or expand on what they've already have. Um, and uh, they're gonna generate a lot of news as they stated in their press releases. And so uh, we expect to be talking about Candente uh, more in future shows. We've been following them for close to five years now and um, they've con consistently uh, uh, brought the project forward. Now they're really at some serious milestones for the project. So we're, uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed that things continue to go that way for them. We think that they will. And uh, a great place to do your homework is on their website. As I said, that's uh, candentecopper.com. And uh, you can find plenty of information on there about their uh, Canariaco project. And so that's a wrap on our um, in the news show uh, in the news part of the show. Uh, before closing, we'd like to stress that this show and our reports are for information purposes only. We aren't making buying or selling recommendations. Uh, it's important for you to do your own research and speak with your financial advisors before making any investment decisions. 
We're always trying to grow our audience and any efforts you make to help us with that uh, by letting your friends <clears throat> that follow the markets know about our website, our reports, and our shows uh, would be greatly appreciated. <coughs> Excuse me. We also really appreciate you taking the time to watch these shows. We know that everybody is very busy these days and we strive to produce a show that saves you time and brings you helpful, high quality information. Um, our upcoming show, we're going to be doing another in the news show. Um, if you want to keep track of, of our shows, the best way or any of our work for that matter uh, is to subscribe. Uh, there's no charge to be on our email list. Um, if you look above me on the website at alanberryreports.com, there's a subscribe section. Just fill out the information. There's no charge to be on there. And we'll keep you updated on when we put out new shows and any other work that we're doing. And, uh, and um, that's the best way to keep up on us. Um, we hope you can uh, watch our future shows. And you can find all of our work on our website at alanberryreports.com. We'll see you soon and have a great day.